One of my favorite things about stories is the twist. Now, not every story has to have a twist, but a lot of great stories have a lot of great twists. And some really bad stories have really great twists, and some really good stories don't have any twists at all. And I'm twisting myself up trying to figure out how to explain this. <laughs> That's beside the point. The point is, a lot of my personal favorite stories, big selling point for me, is the twist. And you never get that serotonin, whoever Sarah is, the second time ever as much when you read a story when you already know where the twist is going. There's so many great things you can experience, right? You can experience the uh, joy of the little hints that you missed the first time where you're like, <laughs> yes, author, I am now in on the joke. I know that they're all dead. That's a spoiler. This is this is true for me in film and in books. Some of my favorite films were made by M. Night Shyamalan, who was the king of twists for a long time. Sixth Sense, Signs, uh, other movies that he made. What else did he make? Hello, Brain? I almost said Stranger Things. That's not right. Movies like Memento, Fight Club. These are really high on my personal lists for their ability to catch me off guard and do something truly special. In the genres of books that I love, fantasy and sci-fi, twists are a big deal, but they're not always the biggest of deal. But there are a couple books that have done twists so well that I would literally give you my kidney to be able to read them for the first time. Like if you had some sort of brain device, like the Men in Black Flash, and be like, you'd be like, hey, Andrew, look into this. Oh, wow, I've completely forgotten how this one specific book goes. And I could read it again. I'd be willing to negotiate a kidney. Speaking of me, my name is Andrew Gibbler. I'm an author and a booktuber. This is Give Reads, where we talk about reading, sometimes about writing, sometimes we have some dumb games with other authors. If this is the kind of content you're into, make sure you hit the subscribe button to keep up to date. Make sure to hit the like button. And now I'm gonna introduce you guys to a couple of books that you should have read. If you haven't, I'm jealous because you're about to get the twist of a lifetime for the first time. Now, with each of these books, I'm gonna discuss them in depth. I will warn you before they're spoilers. So when I get to that part, you can skip past to get to the next one, okay? Number four is, is actually, I think, a really, really easy one. And I'm kind of lumping a couple books together, but this is Game of Thrones. Um, it shouldn't come as any surprise to anyone that Game of Thrones has some of the best twists. I read the first book, I wasn't really into it. I mean, the political intrigue, the, the, the sort of dark and swirly world that it was, it was fun, you know, I, like I was enjoying it, but it wasn't blowing me away until, I won't go through major, major spoilers if you haven't watched Game of Thrones, I, the twists in it are worth it. When Ned Stark died, that's when I knew this show was serious. And then when the Red Wedding happened, I lost my freaking mind, right? My favorite moment is when you read a twist in the book and you close the book and you throw the book against a wall because you have been so assaulted in your imagination by the twist that there's nothing you can do. The Red Wedding is a book throwing moment and there's a few more book throwing moments in this list that we'll talk about. I think that if you're talking about twists, Game of Thrones just has to be on the list. So that's why it's at number four. It's not my absolute favorite. I don't necessarily feel the itch to read it again. I will absolutely read the future ones when they come out, <laughs> if they ever do. Um, but the twists are excellent. If you haven't, read it. The rest of my list, I think it's a little bit sneakier. So number three is a book that I think gets slept on a lot. I, it was like a book that was really popular when I was younger, but then like one day we just all stopped talking about it. And I don't know why, but I want to put Ender's Game on the list. If you've never read Ender's Game, basically the plot follows uh, a young man named Ender. There's like this huge war going on between aliens and humans and Ender goes to space college. That's what I call it. But no, he goes to like the academy, right? Where everybody's trained to fight. And he's going through all these like war games with the other gifted and talented children, trying to train him to be a soldier to help stop the aliens from eating all of our faces. Along the way, he sort of develops like into kind of this smart kid. He thinks outside the box. He's sort of a little bit atypical. Uh, and all of that sort of leads to him having a unique perspective. And he goes from being kind of like the bullied loser to being respected by his peermates. None of that is spoilers. At this point, we're gonna dive into spoilers. So if you haven't read Ender's Game, skip ahead. I'll we'll put a little marker down there so you can do the little time segment to know when we talk about the next one. The twist, the incredible twist about how this goes is that Ender eventually gets like into higher classes where he's like practicing being an officer and he's commanding spaceships, you know, sending fleets out, kind of like playing like real time strategy games and things like that. And it turns out in the twist, in the reveal, the thing that's really, really cool is that it wasn't a game. They put him in control of the armies and let him go. Because basically the premise is in order to win against a superior enemy, no one is heartless enough to command people to go to their death. So basically the entire military academy existed to train and find a child genius that they wouldn't tell was sending people to death so they could make like the most heartless and cold freaking decisions to win the war, right? Just like when you play real-time strategy and you're like, uh oh, they're attacking. Send these three guys off to hold them off while I build more troops. That kind of thing? Yeah, but they were doing it with real lives. And everybody else knew and everybody else signed up and agreed to it, except for Ender. 
So Ender is like playing this game, right? He's like on this bridge and he's knocking it out and everyone's there panicking and you're reading it. You're like, finally, you're like getting a little like serotonin because you're like, ah, Ender, you've done it. Like you've graduated. We've seen you come in as an idiot child. And now you're like uh, top of your class. Like I'm proud of the progression that you have shown, right? And then he finishes and everyone's like cheering and losing their mind. And he's like, what's the big deal? And they're like, you just won the war. You killed all the aliens. And he like all of a sudden has this moment where like millions of lives are on his conscience, but also he saved humanity. Such a great twist and you can never read the book the same way again. If you haven't read Ender's Game, I do highly recommend it. It's worth it to experience that twist once. There's other ones in the series which I've never read. I've heard some of my friends really like the later ones more, some of them don't. I've only read Ender's Game, but it's twist. Mm, chef's kiss. Number two for me, it should not be a surprise from anybody who's ever read Urban Fantasy, but for me, I put Changes. Now, if you haven't read Changes, it's book uh, 12, I believe, of the Dresden Files. I'm pretty sure it's book 12. If you're not up to date, be careful because I can't talk about this without having spoilers of the series, but I will try not to spoil like the whole book plot before we talk about the beginning, middle and end. And I'll give you some warning as we go. If you're not familiar with the Dresden Files, it's a fantastic series. Remember, all the books I describe will be linked down below. You can go grab them. It's a great way to support me if the books that uh, I recommend to you are interesting. Amazon gives me a kickback for being a shiller. Wee! Changes is, as I said, book 11 or 12 of the Dresden Files, right? And Dresden Files have built up to be this huge freaking war, okay? All these cases have sort of like knit together to reveal that, oh, hey, by the way, the uh, Red Court of Vampires, a certain breed of vampires, they basically run like the cartel and they are gunning for mages and it is mage versus vampires in an all-out war that's like happening in the shadows remember how i was talking about there are books that just make you throw the book against the wall right like it just offends you it just assaults you it's like hey this happens and you're so upset that the only way to get it out of you is to close your book and throw it okay. honestly i'm so happy whenever i read one of those ones i'm furious right but also i'm so happy my dream is to write a book that everyone throws against the wall that would be my personal goal the opening line of changes is literally a book throwing moment right that's where the book starts right and uh if you haven't read the book i won't say what it is if you've read the book you know exactly what i'm talking about we go from zero to 100 and then the book ends at about 400 and from here on out we'll talk about spoilers within changes okay so you start out with oh hey by the way you have a kid and your kid's been kidnapped by the red court because they hate you uh, i love the progression of the way that they go through things the way that harry's forced to make decisions to get power the way that like the corruption's coming for him all the places he's put and all that's amazing the way like it's set and everything but the ending is not something I could have predicted. And it's, I guess it's maybe not the most traditional twist, right? It's not like, ha ha, I was dead the whole time. It's not a Shyamalan, it's not something like that. But the fact that the scope of the power that he gets handed and he wipes out an entire species, that's not where I thought we started. Okay, the beginning of the book, his daughter was kidnapped. At the end of the book, there's no more red court vampires. He kills all of them, okay? And that final scene where his girlfriend has been bitten and she's infected and she tells him to use her as the sacrifice to trigger the spell that will kill everyone in the bloodline and he does it, it's so beautifully written, it's so incredible, but like, as I was reading it, you know, I'm sobbing, but also just like, oh, I can't believe this is happening. Um, it's such a delicious moment of villains getting their just desserts, sacrifice of parents, uh, tortured decisions you have to make. I wish I could read it again for the first time, just to feel that horror, right? As you realize like where this is going and, and the repercussions that happen. Mm. Even just from the first moment, the first moment where you're like, oh, hey, they kidnapped our daughter. I was, I was like, I put the book down, I threw it. If you haven't read Changes, I don't know why you're listening to this. Go read it. It's ruined, but go read it. Uh, and go read the whole Dresden Files. They're highly, highly worth your time. My number one choice is another one that I don't see on lists very often. And I'm so excited about this. I will never shut up about this. But it is I Am Legend by Richard Matheson. Now, obviously, you've probably seen the movie if you've never read it. It's more of a short story novella, I think, than a full novel. I, I don't remember. It's a little bit shorter, as I recall. If you've seen the movie, you know that the ending kind of was like, a little weird there's like the butterfly moment and stuff and everything that's not in the book that's not in the book at all if you don't know i am legend basically the premise is that there is a vampire outbreak that occurs uh and the whole world becomes vampires right everybody turns into a vampire and there's two types of vampires vampires that were alive that caught the sickness and became a vampire and vampires that are dead that are now like undead zombies the world falls into pandemonium everything's going apart and you follow this scientist who's trying to figure out how to come up with a cure and slowly over time he begins to realize that like he's the only one left and he is going out by day forging for goods and at night trying to study science and figure out how to fight this disease but it's not going well he you know makes a couple friends he loses a couple friends stuff like that happens and it's really really cool post-apocalyptic like adventure through society collapsing and trying to figure out what the heck is going on here's the twist the real twist if you haven't read it if you have you know what i'm about to say okay the twist that i am legend is incredible because it's a juxtaposition of man and monster that blew my freaking mind okay so remember how i mentioned that there are 
living vampires and dead vampires. The dead vampires are basically brainless. And what happens is living vampires begin to realize that uh, they become like normalized to being vampires. They start to understand that they all exist as a new society and they begin to rebuild society. Basically just human society, but it happens at night instead of at day, right? Whole thing, the government's being rebuilt, everything. They're killing off the zombies because they're sort of just like rabid, you know, it's like having rabies basically. And what happens is eventually society's restored. And the scientist is the only human left on the face of the earth. As far as we can tell, he's the only one who never became infected. And every day, vampires have to go to sleep. They go to sleep during the day and they're like forced into a coma. And at night, or what, which is their night, he breaks into their houses, he stakes them and he steals their stuff, right? He becomes the monster. Eventually they hunt him down, they hold a trial and they execute him. And then like, as he's going to be executed, he sees like hundreds of vampires like peering at him all terrified because to them, he is the monster, the one that kills them in their sleep. He is the legend. That's why it's called I am legend, right? Hopefully I've sold you on that. Okay, that's literally the reason. Like, it, I, 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 and that realization was so cool to me, blew my freaking mind. I love it so much. So these are four books that all have twists that I would die to be able to experience again for the first time if you haven't experienced any of them. If you buy them through my link, Amazon gives you a little kickback. It helps support me, helps me pay the bills while I try to write and tell stories. In the meantime, if you guys are new to the channel, if you want more reading recommendations, more writing stuff to talk nerdy stuff about books, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and I will see you guys in the next video. Happy reading.